It's Friday. It's the first hour of our program, so it's time for the guy I think of as America's senator, Senator Bernie Sanders, to be with us. Uh, Sanders.senate.gov is website. Senator Sanders, welcome. Great to be with you, Tom. Great to have a, have you with us. You are a member of this uh, very, very select committee uh, of, of senators and members of the House of Representatives who are working out the reconciliation of the, 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 the Senate versus the House budgets uh, that came out of ending the government shutdown. How's it going? What's happening? Well, it was an interesting uh, meeting. We had one open meeting uh, this week, and I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, one of the uh, things I think the public learned was our Republican friends are not quite so anxious to shut down the government again. Uh, and over and over again, Republicans were talking about how we must not shut down the government. I think they understand they have paid a very, very heavy political price for that irresponsibility. Uh, people may disagree about uh, the Affordable Care Act, but the vast majority of the American people do not believe you shut down the government and refuse to pay your bills uh, because you are concerned about that one issue. So, you know, I think the government is not going to shut down again, and that's obviously a good thing. Uh, you know, uh, I, I think there actually might be some common ground, but uh, and I'll tell you where I think that's coming from. But I thought from the following proposition is that when you look at where we are in terms of our nation, what people tell me all the time and what the polls tell us as well, Tom, is the most important issue on people's mind is not the deficit, which clearly is important. And everybody should know that we've cut the deficit in half in the last four years from 1.4 trillion to seven to about 680 billion. But what people are telling me is jobs are the most important issue. People understand that real unemployment today is close to 14 percent, youth unemployment close to 20 percent, and that is really scary. These are kids mm. who are leaving high school, college, not able to get a job, not able to start their careers. Very bad, very bad situation. African American youth unemployment 40 percent. So we're telling kids, don't stand on street corners, don't do drugs, be responsible, and yet for millions of these kids, there just are no jobs out there. So people are saying, let's do something about creating jobs. And then when we talk about the deficit, what people, many people do know, I mean, they really know, is that, hey, how do we get into this deficit in the first place? And they remember that when Clinton left office back in January 2001, we were running a $236 billion surplus, surplus. And what economists were telling us is that that surplus would go, uh, would continue to grow, and that we would eventually completely uh, wipe out the national debt. And then people are saying, well, what happened? What happened under Bush? Well, we went into two wars that were not paid for. And many of these guys now who are talking about, oh, we have to cut Social Security, we've got to cut Medicare, we've got to cut Medicaid, we have to cut education. These are the people who voted for two wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and didn't pay for those wars. They voted for a prescription drug program, very expensive, written by the insurance companies. They didn't pay for that. They gave huge tax breaks for the rich, millionaires, billionaires, large corporations. They didn't offset those tax breaks. And then on top of all of that, of course, we had the Wall Street collapse caused by the greed and recklessness and illegal behavior on Wall Street that resulted because of the deregulation of Wall Street that many of these guys voted for and resulted in less revenue coming into the government, causing uh, the deficit as well. So I think the American people are catching on that you don't balance the budget on the backs of the elderly and the children and the sick and the poor and working families because you fought two wars that you forgot to pay for or you gave huge tax breaks to the rich or you deregulated Wall Street. So that's the kind of context I think where the American people are coming from. Poll after poll after poll. You know what it says? Don't cut Social Security. Don't cut Medicaid. Don't cut, cut Medicaid. Ask the wealthy and large corporations to stop paying their fair share of taxes. And many people also would like us to take a hard look at defense spending, which remains very, very high, uh, despite the fact we no longer have the Soviet Union out there in opposition. We have, you know, Al-Qaeda. Is Al-Qaeda a serious threat? Yes, it is. Do we need a strong defense? In my view, we do. But do we need to spend almost as much as the rest of the world combined? No, I don't think so. So there are ways to do deficit reduction that I am fighting for, uh, which includes doing away with these huge tax havens in the Cayman Islands and in Bermuda, where corporations are, are, are um, putting up almost a, a hundred, uh, we're uh, avoiding about a hundred billion dollars in federal taxes because they're stashing their profits in these countries which are tax-free. 
So there are ways that we can do deficit reduction. There are ways that we can raise the revenue to create jobs uh, in this country. And that's kind of the focus that I am taking uh, on the committee. Okay. In the meantime, $5 billion got cut out of food stamps today. Right. What happened there is money was put into the uh, stimulus package, and that expired. And let me tell you something. Uh, We don't talk in this country about poverty very, very much, but we are becoming a nation in which today we have more people living in poverty than any time in American history. It's about 46.5 million people. Uh, Tom, we got 22% of our kids living in poverty, uh, the highest of any industrialized nation. Uh, we have senior poverty on the rise, uh, over 9% now, I think closing in on 10%, which means that a lot of elderly people are facing very difficult choices about medicine, heating their homes, uh, buying the food they need. Um, and uh, we got a real serious problem. Meanwhile, people on top are doing phenomenally well. So you're looking at America, where a huge number uh, a huge growth in the number of millionaires and, and billionaires. These people on top are doing unbelievably well. Uh, between 2009 and 2012, 95% of all new income went to the top 1%. Meanwhile, at the other end of the spectrum, you're seeing a whole lot of people today, people listening to the show, wondering how they're going to be feeding their kids uh, tonight or tomorrow. And this food stamp cut is uh, awful. Uh, it, it making, it's making a bad situation worse. Most of the people on food stamps are, uh, working families, low income families with kids, uh, people with disabilities, seniors. That's about 85% of the people on food stamps. So to be cutting back on programs, nutrition programs, most basic thing we have is, is whether or not we're going to eat or not. And at the same time, you give tax breaks to the rich or, you know, spend more money on the military does not seem to me to be too equitable. So this is going to really hurt. And then on top of that, we have the Farm Bill, which the Republicans passed in the House. This is above and beyond this $5 billion cut. They want to cut $4 billion a year for the next 10 years in food stamps. So clearly what that will mean is an increase in hunger and malnutrition in the United States. It will mean kids just not getting the food that they need, elderly people, not getting the food that they need. And, you know, that speaks to, uh, you know, what our priorities are as a nation. And that is, um, do we, are we comfortable having such grotesque inequality in terms of income and wealth in this country, or are we going to protect the vulnerable people in this country? So that is a huge issue. There's another issue that's out there that has gotten uh, appropriately enough a whole lot of attention, and that is what's going on with the, uh, uh, National Security Agency, the NSA. And it appears that almost every day you pick up the paper, there's another outrage uh, being committed by the NSA. Uh, so it's not only that they're uh, being incredibly intrusive on the American people, and now uh, tapping into the phones of many governmental leaders around the world, including some of our strongest allies, causing mass resentment, massive resentment all over uh, the world. So that's an issue you know, we can talk about there. Senator Bernie Sanders with us taking your calls next here on the Tom Hartman program in our Brunch with Bernie segment. This is the Tom Hartman program. And be sure to check out Bernie's website at sanders.senate.gov. You can sign up for the Bernie Buzz, his newsletter. It is great. Welcome back. And uh, Bernie, pick up calls here. Let's do it. Okay. Ed in Klamath Falls, Oregon, watching Free Speech TV on the Dish Satellite TV Network. You are on the air with Senator Sanders. Senator Sanders, I would uh, like to know if there's any reason why the Senate couldn't reattach the food stamp bill to the farm bill, restore the cuts to the food stamp program, and tell the Republicans take it or leave it. Well, Ed, the, is, you're absolutely right. There is no reason why that cannot be done, and I think that that is a good idea. Uh, right now, as I mentioned a moment ago, the fight that we're having is not just restoring these cuts. The fight is that we have to also 
uh, defeat the Republican House uh, Farm Bill, which calls for an additional $40 billion in cuts in food stamps over a 10-year period. So we have lost $5 billion. It's going to increase hunger in America. They want to add another $4 billion a year on top of that. This year it would mean uh, $9 billion. That would be just cause real, real, real pain, uh, uh, hunger, devastation to millions of families in this country. So, Ed, your point is a good point, and that's the fight we have to wage. Jim in Sylvania, Ohio, watching Free Speech TV. You're on the air with Senator Sanders. Hi, yeah, my question is with regard to uh, tax cuts. Is there any possibility of getting a tax cut so that people get a foreclosure on the house don't have to pay a tax bill for the money that they got forgiven for? Or if somebody gets a student loan forgiven because they got disabled, don't have to pay taxes on that? Well, Jim, what I would say is uh, we need to do as a nation a lot of work uh, on taxes. <clears throat> Jim is talking about, uh, I think, uh, young people who are graduating college, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars in debt. They have to pay their student loans. They have a job out there that is not paying them a whole lot of money. And, and can they get some help on their taxes? And the answer is, I think that they should. Um, I think we need to take a very hard look at a tax system, which, as I mentioned before, uh, enables one out of four. Uh, corporations in America not to pay a nickel in taxes, uh, which enables companies to stash their money in tax havens in the Cayman Islands and elsewhere. Uh, a tax system in which, in some cases, middle class workers are paying a higher percentage of their income in taxes than, than hedge fund dealers on Wall Street. So there's a lot to be looked at, Jim, in terms of making uh, in these tough economic times, our tax system a lot fairer than it is right now. I think one of the issues uh, Jim was raising is if you are if you have a home that's underwater or in foreclosure and you get any kind of forgiveness or forbearance or whatever the f proper word is, that in some ways for some people that becomes a taxable event, even right. though they didn't actually no, make it. I got that and I understand that. Is exactly. there a way to undo that? Right. I mean, that is an issue that we should be addressing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we just have 20 seconds. So, Well, just on, on the tax thing, it is, uh, it is uh, what our Republican friends, as usual, uh, want to do is to give more tax breaks to the wealthy, more tax breaks to large corporations under this theory of trickle-down economics that the rich and, and, and the uh, large corporations, as a result of tax breaks, will invest more in America and create jobs. We saw that moving under the Bush administration, uh, and it really didn't work. It wasn't, it wasn't a terribly good movie. The ending was not all that great. Yeah. <laughs> to say the very least. Senator, Sanders, Senator Bernie Sanders is with us. We'll be back with more of your calls for Bernie right after this. Welcome back. 20 minutes past the hour. Tom Harvin here with you. Just a quick reminder, by the way, this is the last day of our once a week, once a year, or one week a year, fundraising drive for the Hunter School and the New England Salem Children's Village. Hunterschool.org, SalemChildrensVillage.org. Our cat Higgins passed away last night. I'll be telling you about that in the second hour, but we're soliciting donations in his name today. The toll-free number for the Hunter School and their website, Hunterschool.org, is 800-897-8358. Back to Bernie. Senator Bernie Sanders with us, taking your calls. And Lisa in Huntington Beach, California, listening on KPFK. You are on the air with Senator yes. Sanders. Yes. Senator, um, you talked about the food stamp cuts. Uh, since 2009, the prices of food have gone up, not down. They're going way up. And uh, people are still out of work. People are still underpaid for the work they do. Food stamps have been demonized in popular culture. Is there anybody we can be talking to? Should we contact our legislators, our national, state? Uh, what should we be doing well, about Lisa, it? Lisa, your, your point is absolutely right. Food prices have gone up. Wages have gone down. Poverty is more people living in poverty today than ever before. Uh, I would urge you, food stamps are a federal program. 
And uh, our problem right now is you have Republicans there who want to give tax breaks to the rich and cut food stamps. So uh, if you have Republican uh, members of the Congress there, give them a call. Tell them very strongly that you think we should not be cutting food stamps. In fact, we should be increasing uh, the amount of money that helps uh, kids get food. Um, so get on the phone and make those calls, send those emails. People need to hear from you. Amy, watching Free Speech TV in Madison, Wisconsin. You're on the air with Senator Sanders. Hello? Hello? Yes, this is Amy in Madison. I want, I've been looking at the Social Security disability problem, and I want to know if there's a simple tax rate reallocation between OSI and DI on the horizon. Uh, let me say a word on Social Security, Amy, because uh, that's an issue that we are dealing with um, a whole lot. Uh, right now, uh, in I, what I consider to be a, a just incredibly vulgar way, uh, you have billionaires, people like the Koch brothers, who I hope many listeners know are worth some $71 billion. You have people like Pete Peterson, a Wall Street billionaire, and other billionaires, literally billionaires, who, if you can believe it, are spending hundreds of millions of dollars setting up organizations and think tanks, uh, funding uh, campaign uh, campaigns and, and uh, independent expenditures for candidates. They are spending huge amounts of money because these billionaires are trying to cut Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid. It just is hard for me to believe how somebody who's worth billions of dollars wants to cut back on the amount of Social Security somebody who is struggling to stay alive on, you know, some senior citizen in, in the state of Vermont or in California, you know, is trying to get by on fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars a year or less. And these guys want to cut Social Security. Now, what we're looking at now, Amy, is what is called a so-called chain CPI. And that's a fancy name for cutting back on the cost of living allowances. Uh, just the other day, uh, it was announced that this year, Social Security beneficiaries will get a 1.5% increase. That is very, very little. I think that that does not deal with the increased costs that people on Social Security uh, have to incur. And yet there are people out there, billionaires and others, who are saying, this is too generous. Why are we giving them 1.5? Maybe we should give them 1. Maybe we should give them a half of 1%. If this so-called chain CPI goes into effect, if you're 65 today, by the time you're 75, you'll be losing over $650 a year from what you otherwise would have gotten, and you'll be losing over $1,000 a year by the time you're 85. And you will also, if you are a disabled veteran, somebody who gave up you know, uh, you know, uh, limbs in, in war, lost limbs in war, arms, legs, eyesight, you'll also be suffering significant cuts. So we are fighting very, very hard against the uh, these cuts in Social Security. Unfortunately, we have virtually all Republicans. We have the president on board this absurd idea. Uh, but I'm happy to say that we are working on a petition, Tom, uh, with many progressive groups around the country. We have almost 500,000 names now. Uh, on that petition. And I think there's a lot of grassroots uh, activism around the demand not to cut Social Security. And let me just complete that thought by saying, anyone, anytime you hear somebody telling you on TV or anyplace else that Social Security is going broke, please understand they are not telling you the truth. Social Security today is a $2.8 trillion surplus, can pay out every benefit owed to every eligible American for the next 20 years. Social Security, because it's independently funded by the FICA tax, does not contribute a nickel to the deficit. And with kind of modest changes in the way we fund Social Security, uh, mostly by doing away with the cap, you can have Social Security strong not just for 20 years, but for 50 to 75 years. Bob in Searsport, Maine. A quick question. We have just a minute. Uh, yes. Uh, good afternoon. I'm concerned with the uh, fracking industry, and there's one point about it that I never hear anybody mention, and it concerns the shortage, worldwide shortage of potable water, and they use billions of gallons of water and ruin it for this process, while there are people that don't have water around the world, 
and I, I'd like to have that you know brought to attention. Well, thank you, Bob, and I think that is a good point. It's, it not only takes a lot of water as part of the fracking process, but you run the danger of polluting, severely uh, uh, making toxic uh, water supplies around the country as, as a result of this. So your point is, is I think, a very good point. Mm. And the, the, the fracking chemicals and the earthquakes and everything else. It's, um, I think, what do we have? Ah, here we go. There's the music. Uh, we're talking with Senator Bernie Sanders. By the way, Bernie, you mentioned uh, that petition. Is that over at sanders.senate.gov? No, that's at bernie.org. Okay, at bernie.org. People can sign sign the petition. Thank you for that. Um, at, we'll be right back with more of your calls from Senator Bernie Sanders right after this. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 866-987-THOM. And check out Bernie.org and Sanders.Senate.gov for Senator Sanders' websites. We'll be back with more of Bernie right after this. Welcome back to Talk Media for the Sane Among Us, the Tom Hartman Program. It's our Brunch with Bernie Hour. Senator Bernie Sanders taking your calls at our national town hall meeting. And, uh, Bernie, you're still with us? I am right there, here. There you are. Okay. Mike in Chicago, Illinois. You are on the air with Senator Sanders. Thanks for listening to WCPT. Yes, Senator Sanders. Um, it seems to me for the last, um, I would probably go back to 1981 with Reagan. Um, the trade policies from Democrats and Republicans, these trade agreements have sent millions and millions of manufacturing jobs overseas. And I just don't, it seems like Obama is going down that same path. And, uh, my question to you is, is there any way to repeal any of these agreements or put tariffs on these countries that are trading unfairly with us? Um, it just seems like, um, I don't see that happening because it just seems like most of the Senate and the House seems like they're bought and paid for by these corporations. Thank you. Well, Mike, I think you have <laughs> said it all. Uh, you know, when we talk about politics in America, uh, I, I think the most important fact to appreciate is the degree to which big money in corporate America uh, certainly controls the Republican Party, but unfortunately controls and influences heavily a part of the Democratic Party. And uh, it is absolutely true, as Mike indicates, that these trade policies, they're not Republican, they're not Democrat, they are absolutely bipartisan. And every president in recent years from Reagan to Barack Obama, has bought into it. Uh, I have, i got to tell you, Mike, I have voted against, I think, every single one of these agreements, and from NAFTA to CAFTA to permanent normal trade rela- relations uh, with China, and, and I have a whole lot of concerns about this uh, trade uh, uh, partnership with uh, TPP, Trade Pacific Partnership. Uh, and, and the reason is pretty simple. Uh, these trade agreements are pushed by corporate America, uh, and they much prefer to pay people uh, in a low-wage country abroad 50 cents an hour or a dollar an hour than they do pay Americans a, a living wage in this country. And in many of those developing countries, uh, environmental standards are very, very low. Uh, I think we recently saw what happened in Bangladesh where buildings collapsed, uh, where workers are working for pennies an hour. And sadly enough, uh, that is where these companies uh, want to be. They would rather be in those um, you know, very impoverished uh, countries where people work for, for almost uh, nothing. So I, I think and have believed for many years that we have got to change our trade policies. Uh, and not only have we lost wages, but not only have we lost jobs, and, and, and Mike, you should know that in the last... 12 years or so, we have lost over 50,000 factories in America uh, and millions of decent-paying jobs. Not all of them attributable to trade, but many of them, I think, are. But the other part of the, the other side of the coin is that it's not only loss of jobs, it's wages are going down. There was a piece the other day that manufacturing is growing again in America, that we're creating more manufacturing jobs here. And you know why? Because our wages are now being are, are more competitive with China and other countries. So where is one time, for example, in Detroit, uh, in the automobile plants, you had union workers making really good wages, 24, 26 bucks an hour, strong middle-class wages. New jobs in Detroit are paying half of those wages. 
So this whole trade thing has been one of the reasons, in my view, Mike, why the middle class has declined in this country and poverty has increased, and certainly we have to change them. Ron, in Santa Maria, California, you're on the air with Senator Sanders. Uh, yeah, am I on? You are. Oh, okay, great. Um, I, what it seems like we're watching is, is the, I don't want to say the final death throes of the, uh, the belief in, the, uh, in Reaganomics, but we're seeing uh, uh, people who now, have, have, it seems like they've reverted to having to lie to support uh, all that has gone before us. And it's like, how can we hasten, uh, you know, when you hear these lies uh, over and over and over, how can we hasten and, and really just push the rest of this stuff off the cliff here? Because I, I, I really do believe we're watching the final uh, death throes of, of trying to support this this failed uh, economic ideology. Well, Ron, I think you make a, a good point. Um, but let me tell you what, what happens. Uh, if you are uh, a right-wing extremist um, like the Koch brothers, and, and you have, you know, more money than you can use in a, in a hundred lifetimes, at seventy billion dollars, what you do is you set up all of these organizations, including the Tea Party. You set up think tanks, and you contribute money to universities, uh, and you try to create an intellectual foundation, <clears throat> which which defends. Uh, trickle-down economics. So at the end of the day, what these guys believe is that if we eliminate the minimum wage, if we cut or eliminate Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, Department of Energy, the Environmental Protection Agency, if we go back to the days when just uh, when people had no rights at all, uh, where they were forced to work for whatever wage an employer would provide to them, uh, with no uh, even safety standards, uh, that's freedom for them, and that's the that's where they want to take this country. And they spend huge sums of money uh, to have these think tanks and intellectuals tell us why that is the direction that we should go in. Uh, but I think that you know people, as as you indicate, uh, are catching on. They're giving tax breaks to billionaires and wiping out. Uh, el- el- eliminating the concept of the minimum wage and cutting Social Security, etc., is in fact not in the best interest of working people. Uh, but that's it's an ongoing struggle because they have huge amounts of money. Marcia in Angier, North Carolina, you are on the air, Senator Sanders. Hi. People who don't want corporations in their politics. In about five days, there are elections. And there are people listed at the Green Party website, so please go there, gp.org. Now, Mr. Sanders, um, the, the Medicaid expansion money that was supposed to go to some, some states that didn't take it, um, is there any way to use that money um, maybe to get us health care anyway? Because I went to healthcare.gov, and they said I qualify for Medicaid, but I'm in a state that doesn't take it. Well, Marcia, that's a, a very, very good question and something that we are struggling with with right now. Uh, you have the absurdity, and Mossy is calling, I guess, from North Carolina, uh, but you have the absurdity of situations in many states in this country where you've got a whole lot of folks who have no health insurance, where the federal government has said through the Affordable Care Act, we're going to expand Medicaid, and we're going to pay 100% of the cost. The states don't have to pay, pay anything right now for the next few years, and then they'll only have to pay a very small percentage of the cost. So the federal government did the right thing in a simple way, just expanding Medicaid. And Marcia is saying that in North Carolina, she can't take advantage of it. Is there another way for us to get health insurance uh, to those people? And that is just something we are exploring. But the easiest way to do it uh, was to expand uh, Medicaid. The Supreme Court said that states have a right to reject that. And that's why we are in the way we are. But Marcia raises a very important issue. We have 48 million people today who have no health insurance. Uh, the Affordable Care Act will provide expanded Medicaid and exchanges to a number of people. But there are many, many other people left behind, and we've got to figure out how we do that. Now, my own view uh, is that a single-payer Medicare for all national health care system is what will do the trick. And when you do that, by the way, you not only provide quality care to all people, you do it in a much more cost-effective way than uh, we currently are experiencing in this country. 
people should never forget that in the United States, despite so many people who have no health insurance and people have high deductibles and high premiums and high copayments, despite all of that, we end up spending almost twice as much per person on health care as do the people of any other nation, all of whom in the major countries have national health care systems. David, in Muncie Valley, Pennsylvania, you're on the air with Senator Sanders. Thanks for watching Free Speech TV. Hello, uh, Mr. Senator Bernie Sanders. My name is David Widener, and uh, first off, I just want to thank you because uh, uh, I didn't realize that you even existed in the great state of Vermont, but uh, I guess my question is uh, in regards to Social Security, the fact that... Uh, uh, like my mother was born in 1921, they come up with a rule of the notch baby, and uh, uh, what, what's to keep them from coming up with another rule as far as the Republican Party? And may I also say I'll never vote for another Republican as long as I live. Uh, has to do with Social Security and health care and Medicaid and all that sort of thing. And uh, I guess it's a pretty broad question. Yeah, okay. Well, let's let, to, let's let Bernie take a shot at it because we just have a minute. I think I appreciate David asking uh, that question. Let us be very, very clear. Uh, you have virtually, virtually, I suspect there are some exceptions, but virtually every Republican in Congress right now wants to cut Social Security. And in the House, where the Republicans control that body, they brought forth a devastating budget that would end Medicare as we know it and force major increases, out-of-pocket increases for Medicare recipients. They want to cut Medicaid. And people have got to understand that. And uh, I wish I could tell you, well, that the you know, Democrats were stronger on all of these issues. But the Republicans want to do those things, and we have got to say no, that you don't balance the budget on the backs of the sick or the elderly or those people who are really hurting right now. Senator Bernie Sanders with us, taking your calls here on the Tom Hartman Program, our Brunch with Bernie Hour. Check out Bernie.org at Sanders.Senate.gov. We'll be right back. It's 15 minutes before. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Visit TomHartman.com for audio and video archives. That's Sanders.Senate.gov. For Bernie's website, you can sign up for the Bernie Buzz, his newsletter. Welcome back. Steve in Simi Valley, California, watching Free Speech TV on the Direct TV satellite system. You're on the air with Senator Sanders. Yes, hi. Uh, for Senator Sanders, thank you very much for being America's Senator. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, my question is this. I'm a FERS employee, and um, I'm concerned about the federal pension reform. I'm hearing that both sides want to eliminate the Social Security settlement. I plan on retiring next year, and that's something I'm relying on to help me through my retirement. So my question is, is that something I need to be concerned about? Or uh, anyway, you let me know. The answer is yep. The answer is yes, you do. <clears throat> when I talked before about many Republicans wanting to balance the budget, on the backs of working families and the elderly <clears throat> and the children. This is part of that process. What they are now doing, they're looking at federal employees. Uh, what we have seen in the last three years is federal employees getting zero wage increases. We are seeing as a result of sequestration federal employees being furloughed. We saw as a result of the uh, government shutdown uh, federal employees being thrown out of work for weeks. They are going to get paid for that, but it was very disconcerting and, and I think threatening and scary for a lot of federal employees. And now they want to go after pensions as well. So there is a full court press against federal employees, no question about that. Uh, and it's for two reasons. Number one, it's a way, rather than asking the wealthy 
to help us with deficit reduction. They rather attack federal employees. Uh, and second of all, if you attack federal employees, it becomes, if you like, uh, an example for the rest of the country. So you have private employers out there saying, well, look, you know, federal employees didn't get a wage increase last year. Why should you? Uh, federal employees uh, got cuts in their pension program. That's what we're going to do to you. So it becomes for them a model of what they would like to see the private sector do as well. So, Steve, yes, worry, work with your unions, fight back. Um, we have got to uh, make sure that federal employees receive decent wages and decent benefits and that we are able to attract the best and the brightest young people in this country into federal employment, where they're proud of the work they're doing, where they're doing important work in a cost-effective way, where we have a federal government that works. And if you continue to attack federal employees, it's certainly going to be very hard to do that. But that is precisely what the Republicans want. They want a self-fulfilling prophecy. They want uh, to destroy the government's ability to do anything. And one way you do that is make it unattractive for bright and uh, ambitious people uh, to get into it. We have 30 seconds, Bernie. So they break it and then point out that it's broken? Exactly. I mean, you know, when I was a kid, it was, you know, people said, yeah, I'm working for the government. I'm doing important things. I'm proud of what I'm doing. I'm not getting rich. No one gets rich working for the government. But, you know, there's so many important jobs out there that have very positive impacts on people's lives. But what these guys saying is government can't do anything. We want to discourage anybody from working for the federal government. We want to cut pay for workers. We want to furlough workers. And uh, I think that's just a, a terrible, terrible thing. So I think Steve raises an important issue, and it's one, one that we've got to be cognizant of. Senator Bernie Sanders with us taking your calls. Brunch with Bernie here on the Tom Hartman Program. We'll be back with more of your calls for Bernie right after this. with you and it's our brunch with bernie hour senator bernie sanders on the line with us steve in yorba linda california you're on the air with senator sanders hello uh senator hello tom hartman thanks for all your good work uh, well a couple of quick questions one's for the senator to, to kind of make it straight about what is an entitlement program i keep hearing people that are opposed to social security referring to as an entitlement program i'm not sure what federal programs quote unquote are entitlements and which aren't the other one is for Tom Hartman, and that is we should refer to this so-called Tea Party as the counterfeit so-called Tea Party and never give it that name because it has a much better history than that. Anyway, okay. I'll let you. Thank you, Steve. Well, thank you, Steve. Uh, Steve makes a good point. <clears throat> Many folks refer to Social Security and Medicare as quote-unquote entitlement programs, kind of disparaging uh, name, uh, when in fact people have contributed into the Social Security Trust Fund uh, every week that they work. They pay 6.2% of their income. Their employer matches that uh, payment, and that goes into the Social Security Trust Fund, and that pays their benefits. So that's an earned uh, benefit, not an entitlement program, and the same is true for Medicare. Uh, Medicaid is a different story. Medicaid is a, low in- is a, a government program for uh, lower-income people who do not contribute into it. But certainly in terms of Social Security and Medicare, these are earned benefits. People have contributed into it, and after a lifetime of contributing into it, they get it when they get older. Uh, Bernie, just uh, speaking of language, I, I thought you'd appreciate this. Yesterday, somebody called and suggested that when we refer to the uh, health insurance policies that are being canceled by the health insurance companies, that because these are defective health insurance policies... You know, if you have if you have a defective car, the manufacturers recall them, and the Democrats should start messaging this as these uh, defective plans are being recalled by the insurance companies because they do always offer an alternative. You know, that is uh, up to standards um, rather than cancellation. So I just wanted to share that. No, that's that's well, a good point. Yeah, interesting. Certainly, there have been just uh, so-called insurance programs out there that have been, you know, huge deductibles and and really not not there when you need them to be there. Yeah, they're, they're, they're sort of the, uh, the insurance equivalent of the uh, subprime mortgages. Jeff in Wakanda, Illinois, uh, you're on the air, Senator Sanders. 
Hi, thanks for taking my call. Um, getting to that point about Obamacare and canceling uh, insurance policies that we were told that we were we would be able to keep our current policies. As individuals have been canceled here recently in the past couple of weeks, is that going to also happen when the employer mandate rolls out? Uh, that is a good question, Jeff, and I don't want to answer it definitively. I think that is not the case. Uh, I think, as Tom indicated, uh, one of the issues that's taking place with individual policies is that, I, I think appropriately, there are certain standards that insure certain types of coverage that an insurance policy should provide. And in America today, that has not been the case. Uh, and I think uh, we should have a minimum standard. But I do not, <clears throat> I can't swear to you, but I do not believe that that's going to happen with the employer uh, issue. Paul in South Lyon, Michigan, you're on the air with Senator Sanders. Yeah, good day, gentlemen. Uh, given that the corporate billionaire media refuses to tell the American people the truth, and I'm including all the networks, not just Fox, except for Free Speech TV and MSNBC, they all only report Republican talking points like Obamacare is causing a few people to lose their junk insurance policies and never pointing out that now they're going to actually going to get real coverage from their insurance where they can't be kicked off. Uh, my question is, how can we take back our public airwaves since the networks refuse to fulfill their responsibility of using the airwaves for the public good? Well, you know, Paul, well, uh, what we have... And, and Tom and I have discussed this uh, quite often over the years, is you have a situation where virtually um, uh, every major network in this country is owned by a very large multinational corporation, uh, whether it's Viacom, whether it's uh, Disney, whether it's uh, Comcast, uh, whether it's Rupert Murdoch and, and News Corporation. Uh, and public television is, of course, also heavily influenced by their corporate donors. Uh, and I don't know that there's a magical uh, answer to that. I think one of the immediate uh, issues that, that some of us are fighting for, and the reason I do this show with Tom year after year after year, is that we have got to give as much support as we can to progressive media, uh, Tom and other progressive um, radio people uh, are outnumbered, my God, what is that? We always go through it. It's 10 yeah, to 1. 10 to 1 at least, more yeah. More than that in terms of listening hours uh, from conservatives as opposed to progressives. But the number is just huge. So for every progressive uh, who's on the air, you'll see 10, 15 conservatives. And I, we have just got to do everything we can uh, to give support to progressive media. So, uh, Senator Sanders, we have about a minute and a half left. Your thoughts on the upcoming week and where we're at right now? Uh, well, I think we're looking at a, one of the issues that we didn't get into at, at any great length uh, uh, today is uh, the NSA. Uh, and uh, in my own personal view, I think uh, that agency is, is a bit out of control. Uh, I think we all recognize that terrorism is a serious issue, that there are those folks around the world who would like to do us harm, and we have to work vigilantly. Uh, to protect the American people and people throughout the world from terrorism. Uh, on the other hand, I think that from what I can see, uh, the NSA has far, far, far extended, gone beyond its authority. Uh, I think it is causing very serious problems for our foreign policy and our relationships with governments around the world when people learn that their own government leaders are having their phones tapped. I think there is growing discontent in America where people know that every phone call they make uh, while it's not being tapped, but the record of who they called and when they called is on file someplace. Uh, not to mention the you know government's ability or to get into uh, emails and websites. People are increasingly concerned about these violations of constitutional rights, and this is an issue uh, that I intend to be very active in in the coming weeks and months. Senator Sanders, thanks so much for being with us again today. Thank you, Take and and for the great work you do. And be sure to and. For the rest of you, be sure to check out Bernie's website at sanders.senate.gov. It's, it's a great news site, plus you can sign up for his newsletter there, The Bernie Buzz, which is really worth the read. We'll be back.